What's good, YouTube? DM Gaming here, guys. And in today's video, we are going to be covering defense. But before we get into that, let's get a quick word from the sponsor real fast. Thanks to U4GM sponsorship, they are pro and legit web with over 6,400 comments on Trustpilot, offering cheap college football 25 coin with instant delivery and 100% safe. If you're interested, check the link in the description and use my coupon code DM for 5% off. All right, we tend to talk about offense a lot on the channel. I really like offense, but I really want to kind of talk defense because that's what people have been struggling with the most. And we've done a video covering the uh the 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 settings that you can put in on the game to help with the defense uh and things like that but the same way that personnel is very important for offense it's extremely important for defense and guys the game literally tells you what type of personnel you need to be looking for for both offense and defense um like me Offensively, I like the bear and shoot. That's what I've been running. I have been stupid successful with it. And we even have testimonials from people who have switched to the bear and shoot. And when they got the go daddies, oh my gosh. Like the bear and shoot works to spread the defense out with wide alignments, with many receivers and a few tight ends and backs. It prioritizes a quick pace and creating tough decisions for the defense due to the amount of ground to cover and the speed at which plays are run. Up tempo. But anyway, you know, just a brief, but defense guys, I, even myself, I was running a four, two, five. All right. And I noticed that I didn't have very fast linemen. I was like, why the heck am I running a four, two, five? So I switched to the three, three, five tight defense. And the difference between a three, three, five and a three, three, five tight or a three, three, five stack is in tight guys. It, and I, I hate to say it. I love to say it, actually. We have done defensive breakdowns of the majority of these defensive playbooks, okay? And I've talked about personnel in those. So go check out the, pro the playlist on the channel where we talk about all of that. So it's very similar. The 335 tight, your defensive ends are used more for run blocking. In your traditional 335 stack, it's more of attacking style defense where if I have fast defensive ends, 335 stack is good. If they're not so fast, put them in tight. 335 tight. The reason why it, it it puts them in a head up position of over the tackles. And they're they're solely there for run support. Okay. The 335 tight is used for run support up the middle. It's used to force everything to the outside. So if I have faster linebackers and really good secondary backs, or if I have a, a plethora of secondary backs like me, my situation. Um, when I was with Arkansas, I have switched to Texas Tech, by the way, we did win the national championship, but you know, and I got my go daddies, but you know, I'm currently running the three, three, five tight. That's what I brought over from Arkansas, but I may have to change that. You know what I'm saying? If you go through your depth chart and let's look at my defensive ends, I got some dogs at DN. Look at that 88 speed, 87 acceleration. Um, and then my starting right end. 88 overall, 82 speed, 81 acceleration, you know, you're starting to see that speed, okay? I can run the tight because even in tight, I can widen them out. I go to my defensive tackles. I have speed at the defensive tackle position, okay? So now the question is, okay, I got speed up front. I also have depth up front. I can run a 4-2-5. I can run a four-man front. I can run a three-man front. You got heavy rotation. So if those, if those guys get tired, you got depth coming in. The question is, what are my linebackers looking like? Yeah, and I know you're looking at it. How are you at Texas Tech? 91 overall. Guys, I think I'm in your, like, 10 of this dynasty. This ain't the one with SMU. This is just my play around dynasty. I wanted to play around as a coach, and I'm balling. But anyway... Um, my linebackers, they have speed. My starters do anyway. My right outside is a 94 overall. I got depth at the overall position, but notice there's not much speed from the backups. Okay. My middle linebacker, 85 overall, 85 speed. My backup middle linebacker, 91 speed, 92 acceleration. He is a true freshman, by the way, five-star recruit. Whoop, whoop. Um, and then my linebacker, left outside linebacker has speed. So as far as my starters and my backup middle linebacker, I got speed. 
Now, the problem comes when I look at my corners. I only have three corners that are 80 plus overall. They don't have a whole lot of speed. So guess what I'll not be playing? I am not gonna be playing a lot of man coverage. Why? Because I have zone and slot corners. Man covers, man coverage corners tend to be your faster corners. You know what I'm saying? And then my free safety, however, I got speed at the free safety position. 96, 92, 91, 88, and that's borderline, but we can work with that. And also I have depth at the safety position. So where I ran a 3-3-5 stack, I mean a 3-3-5 tight at, at uh, Arkansas, because I have depth at the safety position, it would benefit me, and I have speed at the safety position. Okay, look at that strong safety speed, 92.89. I almost started the true freshman. Okay, he was a five-star recruit as well, killing it. He's going to be a dog. But because I have that depth and speed at the safety positions, it would benefit me to actually change my scheme from the 3.35 tight Back to the 425. The reason why, because the 335 tight, okay, that five is secondary backs, okay? Three linebackers, okay, and five secondary backs. But because I have so much depth at the D line, okay, it may benefit me. Now you may say, well, okay, why you don't run a 426? Because then I'm all, all of that talent I got at linebacker and D-line, I'm literally taking it off the field and I'm putting more secondary guys on the field while they are talented overall. I would have to play a lot of zone concept. I don't want to do that. I need to use those big guys up front and create as much pressure as possible because if you're going to be playing a zone passing game, you are going to need pressure to be put on the quarterback. Even with man, man is a little bit different because they're following men everywhere. If I had speed, I would definitely go with more of a man play style. But because I lack that speed at the cornerback position, I'm going to go more zone. And if we can create pressure, that's going to force bad throws. Interceptions is on the way. You get what I'm saying? So a 3-2-6, which is similar to your dime formation. But it's not dime. The personnel is different. It tells you here. The 3-2-6 takes the 3-4 adjustment of swapping a defensive lineman for a linebacker and takes it even further by adding two extra defensive backs to the mix instead okay so where you have a three four three down lineman four linebackers okay it keeps the three linemen but it takes away two linebackers and adds two defensive backs so now i have six defensive backs on the field all right it's made to stop passing now I have good overall depth, but like I said, the strength of my defense, my defensive personnel is in my defensive linemen and my middle linebackers, okay? I need to get them on the field, all right? And then play zone in the background, create as much chaos up front. A multiple defense, it literally has multiple fronts. You have a 5-2 front, which would be beneficial, okay? But um, I don't know. Five I could run a 5-2. Multiple defense may be good for me. I could run a 4-3. Nickel would be good. I would have four secondary backs. I would bring in a nickel back who would also be like your slot corner. I could run Dom. I could run 3-4. I may go with the multiple defense, okay? Little bit of everything because technically I can kind of do everything. Just as far as my coverage concepts, I'd be playing a lot of zone rather than man. All right? Your base 4-3. Four down linemen, three linebackers, okay? I could do the 3-3-5. Three, three, the 3-3-5 three, three, splits the difference between the 3-4 and the 3-2-6, adding back one linebacker in lieu of a defensive back, okay? It involves attacking gaps using the six-man defensive front with smaller, faster players, okay? That's what I have faster players i have speed at the defensive tackle position i have speed at the linebacker position i have speed at the defensive end position it's a little bit different than the 335 type because if you read what it even tells you about the 335 type all right uh where is it at the tight ends your defensive ends in the tight alignment with the goal of forcing everything outside to the waiting linebackers and defensive backs could i run the 335 tight yeah but I only have three down linemen. Y'all saw the type of linemen that I have. So that may not be the best option for me. A base 3-4 defense. This playbook is multiple 4-3 schemes that forces, that focuses on generating pressure on the quarterback with the defensive line. Okay. This playbook includes the 5-2 format. 
you have your nickel, you have your dom, and you have your 3-4. Okay, nickel and dom is in every defensive package, but that would be good for me. But, you know what I'm saying? That would get that extra middle linebacker on the field. Two middle linebackers, which I have really good depth in my two middle linebacker positions. And then I have speed on the outside linebacker positions. But the problem is I have a plethora of defensive linemen who are very skilled. Okay, the four two five could work. But once again, I'm taking those linebackers off. I have depth at the linebacker position, but to be honest with you, the depth is at the front. Okay, the four two five, the linebackers and defensive backs especially need to be versatile players able to play run and pass. When you have zone coverage corners, they tend to be better at tackling and playing the run, and they can play the pass because they're zone coverage corners. Does that make sense? So the 425 would be a good use for me because I would have those guys up front. I have good depth, and my strongest portion of my defense is the D-line. I need to utilize that, and I can afford to have, because my strong safety and my free safeties have speed. My cornerbacks do not. OK, I wouldn't play them in a bunch of man. I would run a bunch of zone coverage. OK, a four, three multiple kind of same situation. This would actually be more beneficial because I have three, four. I have four very solid linebackers and with speed four fast linebackers. That would be very beneficial for me to even run a 4-3 scheme, okay? A 3-4 multiple defense. That would even be beneficial. Why? Because that 4-4 defense right there. Yes, the 4-4. I would get all four of my best linebackers. I would get all four of my best D linemen. And I would only have, yes, three guys in the secondary, a corner, two corners in the safety. But the benefit of that is is they good at zone. I can play zone coverage all day behind that. You know what I'm saying? That's fine because the strength of my defense is up front, all right? So my base would probably be out of a 4-4. I could go to a 4-3. I can go to a nickel even, okay? And I can even run down. This is something to consider. I have options. Understand your personnel, ladies and gentlemen, okay? So for me personally, okay, I like the 3-4 because Let's go with the 3-4. I want to run that 3-4. Why? Because when we look back at our personnel on defense, okay, and everybody needs to be doing this inside of their own dynasties, when I look at the personnel I have, defensive line up front, look at those overalls. Those are good. The thing about it is there's speed in the starters. Not so much speed in the backups, but that's fine. 80 speed for a, a, a end, that's fast, okay? 80 speed. Our 70 something speed, 81, 84 acceleration for a defensive tackle is moving. Okay, so if I'm in a four man front, I'm gonna have two defensive tackles. These two defensive tackles are gonna be on the field. And then my defensive ends with that speed on the edge are gonna be on the field. All right, with the four four, I'm gonna have this left outside linebacker on the field. He's a 94 overall, 84 speed, 92 acceleration. I'm gonna have both of these middle linebackers on the field. That's speed. Okay. And I'm going to have my right outside linebacker or my left outside. I don't know why the game does this, guys, but it switches them around for some reason. And that's really weird. Okay, so my right outside linebacker is actually my left outside linebacker. That's really weird. I don't know why they do that. That, that's, that bothers me. It really bothers me. But I don't know. The game, it even does that with my offensive and defensive tackles. I mean, my uh, yeah, my my guards. It it like it switches them around for some reason. It's so weird. Okay, but you're seeing what I'm talking about here. So I have speed at that linebacker position. I'm gonna have these two middle linebackers on the field. They're fast. They're good overall. Okay, and then I have this other somewhat speedy outside linebacker. And then as far as my three secondary backs, I'm gonna have these two corners. Okay. This corner isn't just terribly slow, but he's still considered his own corner because his overall speed is not that high. You know, my backups, you know, it is what it is. I actually don't know why Nicholson is not the starter. Just his ADR, his overall is a little bit lower, but I have to digress. But anyway, you get what I'm saying. These are, I mean, for cornerbacks, guys, these, these guys are slow. But... You play zone and that's fine. They cover mostly of the of the uh, mainly like a cover three kind of look. They'll drop back and play deep while your linebackers are covering underneath. I have a free safety who can run from sideline to sideline. 92 speed, 96 
96 speed, 92 acceleration. This guy's going to be able to go sideline to sideline and make plays, okay? And then, you know, your strong safety could come in on certain packages and stuff like that and kind of be the same thing. So that fits me more because I don't have a lot of speed in the secondary. Now, the thing is, if we're not creating pressure up front, then that's going to be a major problem because then you only got three guys in coverage and your linebackers in coverage so it may even benefit me to sub out my right outside linebacker let's say for my strong safety just to get a little bit more coverage or because i'm in the three three four multiple excuse me i can just go to the three four defense and put more secondary guys on the field substitute one of those d linemen okay for for a secondary back and i still got those four dogs at linebacker you get what i'm saying or go to the nickel same situation so that's why i like this defense but understand your defensive personnel three three five tight puts your defensive ends head up on the tackles they're not wide they're not there for a pass rush they're there to stop the run and i'm gonna tell you if you have some bigger stronger guys they're gonna get penetration just because them being head up you also have a defensive tackle in a zero technique or head up on the center that is big people don't understand how important or how gaps affect the scheme you might think hey in a three-man front you know against you know unbalanced set or something like that you're not going to get much penetration yes you do because just by being head up on the center you force those guards to make a choice do they double team with the center that frees up a linebacker coming through or that frees up the defensive end coming through you know or do they go up on the linebackers then it's one-on-one -on, -one on the d-line and you're going to win that battle you get what i'm saying so understand the difference between the 335 and the 335 tight they are two different sort of defense is because the 335 tight puts the defensive ends standard in a set position now you can widen them manually but by default they're going to be head up okay the 326 is very it's similar to the dime defense but it's not built the same way it's not the same personnel per se uh we've been over to multiple defense you know your alignments with four three check your personnel check what defense you're looking at running if you have like with arkansas i had a bunch i'm talking my secondary was loaded okay so you need to get them dogs on the field you need to be running anything with five or more defensive uh backs on the field a, a, a four two six would be good the three three five tight would be good a three five would be good the, the regular three three five and a four two five would be good because you have more defensive backs on the field However, if you're like me, your defensive backs aren't that good, but you have a lot of good D linemen and you have a handful of good linebackers, you need to be running something with a four man front or a four down linebacker situation like a four four or a three four. You get what I'm saying? So check your personnel, guys. I hope that this video has helped you. This is one of those games where I'm telling you your personnel matters. It completely changes the game. If you don't believe me, ask the people who have tried to uh, implement the veer and shoot offense that I've taught. If you play with it and you know you don't have those go daddies, it's a lot harder to be explosive with that offense. But when you have the go daddies, like, hey, this year on my Texas Tech squad, I got some freaking go daddies on offense. I'll show them to you real quick. Last year, we didn't produce a whole lot. Um, we didn't we didn't produce a whole lot. We we won enough to go undefeated and win the national championship because the Baron shoot is still an explosive offense, but we didn't put up a crap ton of points. But guess what happened, guys? So I was with Arkansas, and guess what? The next year, not the same year, that following year, guess who hits the portal? I have a bunch of players from Arkansas hit the portal. Guess who they ended up signing with? Yes me merlin if y'all saw me playing in the live stream merlin was one of the freshmen or sophomores on no he was a freshman on that team i was playing with on that live stream he ended up transferring and look he's a starter for me he is a go daddy Cantu was another one okay look at that speed on that butt 98 that 90 acceleration is fine but we'll get there look at look at merlin 95 speed 94 acceleration he's gonna get open stupid explosive this kid right here one superstar yes one superstar i know right 95 acceleration 90 speed here's what's crazy guys 
I, I went so hard in the portal, specifically looking for receivers to fit my play style. Look at what we have that we had to redshirt because we got these dogs right here. My freshmen weren't going to play, so I redshirted them, dude. Look at this. 94 speed, 95 acceleration, 94 speed, 94 acceleration, 93 speed, 94 acceleration, 95 speed, 94 acceleration, bro. We And all three, all four of these guys were uh three of them were five stars two of them were four stars like bruh 74 base overall 73 base 69 base he was a three star actually and 68 base my bad two three stars and two four stars um but dude they are fast and they fit my system okay i think already as far as uh stats go we already balling. We already balling. 497 yards passing in the first game. 14 for 21, eight touchdowns. I got some go daddies, man. And it still had over 100 rushing yards. But look at them pass yards, bro. Merlin went off. Cantu got him some. And Lyles even got him a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, dude. Trust what I'm telling you. Your personnel matters. Even on offense, even more so on defense. Try it and let me know what y'all think. Till next time, y'all. Thanks for watching. Peace.